Hello everybody, it's Chris, and today I am gonna give the 880 an ignition tune-up. You may have heard me mention in previous videos about it died once or twice during bailing, had to clean up the points, and went right back to work. Um, old wires, old plugs, you know, it's been running good for a year now. It's probably a time I gave it an actual tune-up. I did put a new coil on it when I first got it running, so that part's done. So I think what I will do is I can probably get to most of this, but just to make the video a little, probably get a little more light in there and everything, I'm gonna get the side panel off. Something to take note of where number one is, it should be, sometimes guys get the distributors on wrong when they uh, rebuild engines, but it should be just to the left counterclockwise, looking down, of the clip. So this one's good. Should be pointing like right in there. Well, the rotor will be when it's at number one. So one, five, three, six, two, four. So I can pull them out. Away they go. And you might say, who put the breather tube right in the way of number six wire? An engineer did. They probably could have come up with a better way to do it, but they did not. So uh, some of them are into a 9 16 headed bolt into the block. Some like this are into the three quarter inch bolt that holds the oil filter base on. Taking the one bolt out ain't gonna hurt anything. And it's gonna make getting that plug out a lot easier. At this point, I guess we don't really have to pull the wires from the cap because the cap's getting replaced too. Got to do one of those. And who knows, it might help you uh, figure out where everything went later on if you just leave them in the cap. Got a new rotor. This plate doesn't get replaced, so be careful with it. And uh, got new points and condenser. I'm trying to remember, did I replace, I'm definitely replacing them points because I keep having to file them. And now I see why, maybe, I don't know, but they, they're getting fuzzy as a friend likes to call it. And that screwdriver is too big. And I need a little wrench to loosen up that post there for the, um, you know, that thing, condenser. The condenser, which I guess we will go ahead and replace. I knew that it, uh, it helps boost the coil to make it run better. So sometimes if it's just running like crap, doesn't fire good. Um, well, you know, as long as you leave the RPMs all right, it'll run all, you know, run decent. But as soon as you try to do anything with it, it just starts spitting and sputtering. Sometimes it can be this, because it's not boosting that coil spark well. The other thing it does is help uh, with keep the spark from being so bad between the points, which makes me think that, well, it needs to replace. I did not realize that, but a bad condenser can eat up points. So we're gonna replace that baby. It seems like the condensers that are on the market these days are not the best quality. I guess I should probably take the screw all the way out. See if I can keep my hands out of the way too. Don't drop the screws. And then this little tab goes over that. And then this is on a post here, so it's gonna take a little wiggling to get it up. And of course the stud is sticking out too far. It's just a stud that goes through this Bakelite plastic thing. And uh, essentially if you for whatever reason it's sticking out one side more than the other I think you can draw it up the other way but I wouldn't quote me on that if I grab the right wrench nope 
Now I can still. Loosen it up some more to get it away from those breaker points so I can get them up off of it. Because they're just catching on the end of the stud. There. Doesn't look that bad, but I've got a new one. So we're putting it in. I got all my ignition parts from Corvus Oliver. And hopefully they're good. They said they haven't gotten any complaints. I know some of the stuff on the market is just poor quality. Um, usually, there it is. Usually, they, there's a little packet of grease in there. And you put it on this plastic brush thing that follows the lobes on the uh, distributor shaft. And that just kind of helps lubricate it and keep it from wearing out. I don't know. It's one of those packages that are smarter than me. Hold on. There we go. This is actually kind of oily. Usually it's more like a grease, but who am I to question such things? Get it on there. Oh, we gotta get it past that stud that's sticking through a ways. There. get it on the stud get it down on that screw this screw is for adjusting the breaker gap which we will get to momentarily we might as well get the new condenser in Get in there. Where'd the hole go? Come on. There we go. And we put the lead for the condenser, on the lead that comes in from the coil. I'm sure a lot of you have done this before. Some of you are probably saying, go with electronic ignition. When electronic ignition was first out, apparently it was the cat's pajamas, but I've been hearing quality issues with that now. And uh, when it's over a hundred bucks, but I can buy this point, point set for uh, and condenser for $8 from Corvus. I believe that's what it was, don't quote me. Your results may vary. But anyways, it's uh, I can buy a lot of uh, those for the same price of one electronic ignition and overall I guess maybe I've been fortunate but I haven't had too much trouble with uh, old point style ignition let me double check this is kind of sticking up a little bit make sure this is going to go down all right before ain't hitting the cover I think we're good all right Get that screw in loosely. Forget where I set my screwdriver. Grab the one with the magnetic tip. Oops, I did not need to tighten that yet because I need to set the point gap. And to do that, each you see there's six lobes because there's six pistons. 
we need to get that little plastic part that I lubricated right there to where it's right on top of one of those lobes, the maximum distance that it's going to be open. You can try bumping it with a starter. Let's see how I can do by hand with the fly or the fan and the fan belt. The power steering on here, it's kind of a, that's not it. These all have a three quarter inch bolt that runs the, uh, or holds the front pulley on, which means that an inch and an eighth nut will fit on there. And not an inch and eighth nut, it's an inch and eighth socket. Then we take our really long half inch drive extension and play blind man's bluff with it. Got it. Take that ratchet and turn. I think that's it. Oh, I do believe that I think it's 20 thousandths these are set for. I should probably look it up. Grandpa always went by the thickness of a matchbook cover. And it's wide, but that's weird. Well, there's probably there was probably some wear on that pointer thing that's a reason to keep them adjusted is as that wears against this that gap's going to close 1550 one time got pretty uh got pretty tight and boy it wasn't running good and the manifold was getting almost glowing and it wasn't really working that hard or wasn't doing anything that was working that hard and check the point gap and it was almost non-existent that feels pretty good it's just a slight amount of drag some kits actually come with a uh, with a feeler gauge those are kind of nice this one did not so there that should be set we'll take this remaining lube and, and get it all over my fingers because I squeezed the wrong side. So put a little on the face of the shaft there. Okay, everything under the cover is done. Did I tighten that? Yes, I did. Yes. That screw is tight. This one's just for adjusting. Not all of them have that adjustment screw. It's definitely nice when it does, because then it really kind of, you can tune it right in. So we can put this baby back on. Notice there's a notch out of it that lines up with where this clip uh, comes up higher on only one side. And then we got our Why does it feel like it's not going down all the way? All right, I'm gonna to try to get that down in there a little better. First, I must grab the correct wrench again. You know, it's always good to grab a couple extras and that way you're always confused instead of just sometimes. That's better. Yes, that feels more secure. That's good. That could possibly either crack this, and cracks like to conduct electricity. I know it's weird, but when you get into high voltage stuff, 
electricity can do some weird things. New rotor. There's only one way it'll go on properly. There's a notch here and notch there. I like to give them a little turn. That's the advance. There's a mechanical advance inside there when the engine's revved up the RPM, the weights, centrifugal force forces them out and it advances the timing a little bit because it's turning so fast it has to ignite sooner to get you proper power, proper running. So that's good. We'll go ahead and throw the cap on and then we'll do the spark plugs. And this once again is a one-way thing. It's got the notch here, here, and the other Duman Hassa right there, and then you let it fly around at you. There. All right, let's change some spark plugs. 7-8 socket. And I should have brought an extension. Is that off screen? Yeah. Little sooty. Not terrible, but As spark plugs wear and age, things can happen. The porcelain inside there can crack. Like I was saying before, cracks can conduct electricity in weird ways. It'll follow right down that crack and short out and not fire. Then every time it fires, there's a little lightning bolt that's super hot jumping across there. And so it melts a tiny little bit of the electrode away. And over the years, that starts showing up. The gap gets bigger. It doesn't have the right shape. It's just better. They're not that expensive. Go ahead and replace them. Check the gap. 25 thousandths. The gap is too small. You don't get a hot spark. If it's too big, it makes the ignition system work harder because it takes more voltage to jump across the bigger gap. So that makes for more spark on your points, more work on your coil. So there are trade-offs. I mean, you can probably pullers and can tell you more about that stuff. I'm looking to use mine. So I like to use stock stuff. I want them to last. But essentially you just, uh, this one's got wires. There's ones where you put it in there and spin it around. And I'm sure a lot of this is old hat for you guys. A lot of you guys anyways. But you can still watch. So 25 thousandths. From there, just screw it back in. Well, not back in because it's a new one. It's always nice when they come out without a struggle. And I shouldn't say that before I have all six out. So that's like jinxing myself. About the same, just a little soot. Not terrible. I also got the spark plugs from uh, Corvus Oliver. Auto Light 388. That's pretty much the one for everything uh, three digit and older. Unless you get back in the Heart par days, and I think things are different, but that one needs opened up just a hair. I 
imagine you could use a feeler gauge in here too. I like that. Back when we did run champions, we ran D16s in most of these, and oh, look at that. That's what this one is. Uh, D21s. Oh, this is a UD16. I wonder if that's a resistance plug. I might have to Google that. This one looks a little cleaner. A little closer to the heat. Well, took a little looking on the internet, but U equals resistor type auxiliary gap, D, 18 millimeter threads, and 16 is the heat range. So it is a resistor type plug, which might have been uh, part of the reason the points were giving me grief, because a resistor plug does what it says. It resists, 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 resists. <laughs> it resists the current and so the voltage has to build up higher to jump the, the gap. And so then you get a hotter spark. It's good for engines that are burning a lot of oil or something like that. Um, so uh, helps keep them a little cleaner. But it also, once again, is making a hotter spark. So it's more juice through the, uh, the points and condenser. So there's a trade-off. Thought I'd double check one. It's set at 25 thousandths. We'll see how well it runs with these auto lights that are not resistance type plugs. You don't want 40 thousandths. You know, thinking back, this tractor, uh, well, the governor was set tight. I reset that. You got these hotter plugs, resistance plugs, and a few other odds and ends. I would say someone was tractor pulling this baby. Definitely looking for some extra power. I guess most guys are. That one's a little wet. A little oily. It was definitely a strong runner with the setup it had just getting tired of those points falling out i've had pretty good luck with ac um, spark plugs some guys complain about those but if i use those i go with a c87 Once again, it's mostly just oily on the threads, which is fine, I guess, because it ain't rusted in place. Just a little dry and sooty on the inside. That one's a little wide. Doesn't really matter. It's not going back in. An Auto Light 386 will work. I think that's a little bit cooler plug. I guess it just depends on what you're doing with them. Generally, if you're not working them hard, you want a hotter plug. Helps burn the gas and everything better. But if you're out plowing with them all the time, really working them, then you might want to go with the, the cooler plug. All right, I bought the uh, already made plug wire kit from Corvus. It 
they use a, um, it's not solid wire, but it's a copper core. Let me just, just see it down in there. The upside of that is they don't degrade as fast as the uh, newer silicone wiry whatever graphite core um, but they give off more noise so if your radio is ticking or popping or something it's because of these some idiot forgot to hit the record button but what I did was took their wires Found the long ones, they do have them cut to length. Uh, knew this was number one, so took the, and that's the basically the farthest from the distributor. Put that one there. Uh, and then the other longest one, I put on number six, which is opposite of number one. And then went with number five and number two because they were the next longest wires. And that left three and four. So three, one, five, three, six, two, four. And they also sent these elastorator doohickeys to kind of help group them together. We'll do it with the long ones. I think the short ones are going to be fine. That does make it look a little nicer. I could uh, put that, that'd be stretching it. So I could put that fourth one in there. Or not fourth one, but the one for number four. Let's see what happens if I try to put 10 pounds of potatoes in the five pound sack. Yeah, good enough. <laughs> five. Three, six, two, four. That should make it run. Now there's pieces flying everywhere. That ended up to the distributor. The other end up to the coil. Slide the boot on, and I think we're in business. I think that's all the pieces, parts I have. Ta-da! Now let me pick up a little bit, and we'll fire her up and see how she runs, or if she runs. Well, and I guess we don't want to forget the breather pipe. Oh, I hid the bolt from myself. Or I buried it under spark plugs and paraphernalia. All right, let's give it a whirl. It's uh, pretty much lunchtime, so I can run it a little bit and then, you know, leave and let the mice choke. Well, we can do a check for spark leaks. Hate it when stuff leaks after you work on it. And if I've discovered anything, is that someone on YouTube will see it if it's happening. It's amazing. Had a uh, video a few years back of the 77 running the auger, and every once in a while a spark was jumping out of the cap here. 
And someone caught it. They were right. I could, you know, really spark test it. There we go. I think she's ready. We'll put it on the auger some this fall. If it ever quits raining so I can try out that new, to me, combine and and just get some harvesting done. Thought yesterday was going to be dry and it ended up misting, raining, or doing something like that all day long. I'm not holding out much hope for today because the sun hasn't broke out. There's no breeze. And then it's rain on through the rest of the weekend. Today's Wednesday. So yeah, you know, they were ready about this time last week when the rain started. <laughs> and uh, it'll happen eventually. But at least I got, oh, I guess I've got tractors, but be able to give this one a good try on the auger now that it's got a tune up, the throttle will set right, just all sorts of things getting undone, unfarmerized. Well, let's call that a video before I die of carbon monoxide poisoning because I'm not smart enough to open the doors or something. As always, I appreciate everybody watching. These uh, tune-up just pretty much applies to a lot of the Olivers. So uh, hopefully it helps you, and we will see you in the next one.